Today, Keith Park is going to demonstrate a safe method for creating a whip and tongue graph. Keith is a horticulturalist and an arborist with the National Park Service. Grafting is the ancient method for joining two woody plants together. This is done to join a cultivated variety with a rootstock and is very common in fruit trees and other cultivated trees and shrubs. Whip and tongue graft is one type of grafting, and while it's an excellent method, it can be hazardous. Keith is going to demonstrate a technique that protects your fingers and hands from cuts. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a whip and tongue graft for a fruit tree using two pieces of material, a rootstock and a scion. Grafting is basically simply the joining of two pieces of material. First step is to prepare them by cutting the ends flush and making sure they're not jagged or anything. Next requires the use of a specialized grafting knife such as this one. A specialized grafting knife is beveled on one side but perfectly flat on the other. The reason for this is that the flatness of this side allows the cut to be perfectly flat, unlike using a regular knife which has a slight bevel on both sides which will create a slightly concave cut. The problem with a slightly concave cut is that the two pieces won't mate very perfectly. They should be flat like that. Now the technique for making the cuts themselves is pretty simple, although it can be dangerous. This part is pretty straightforward. I lock my arms together, grip the knife and the part very carefully, and make a forward motion like that. And I do that on both pieces of material. As you can see, the grafting knife makes a nice flat cut. The next step is to make a back notch on both pieces so that the two pieces lock together. Otherwise, they might just fall apart like that, even if they're wrapped. To make the back cut, I firmly grasp the piece of rootstock or scion, and I choke up on the grafting knife like this. It's very important to keep your fingers and hands tight together. I lock my thumbs and my knuckles together and start my back cut about three quarters or two thirds of the way up the initial cut. You are putting the knife, pushing it back towards your hand, so you have to be very careful that you don't push too hard. But by having your hands locked together in this fashion, even if the knife does slip a little bit, it won't go very far because your hands are already locked together. I use slight wiggling motions just to get the blade started and push it carefully about a quarter inch into the material to make the back notch. And on the scion piece, as you can see, I have my hands locked together firmly again, and I make my back cut with small wiggling motions. And lastly, you join the two pieces by joining the back cut piece together and pushing firmly, not enough to split the two pieces down the lengthwise, but enough so that they match up as firmly and flush as possible. Sometimes you won't have pieces that are matched perfectly in diameter, which is okay. What's important is that you match at least one side, left or right, so that the cambium layers can fuse. After the scion and rootstock are joined, the graphene is wrapped with biodegradable tape. The grafted tree is immediately potted for a period of establishment before planting out in the field.